So what we're building is the structure that corals can use to settle on. Corals have uh, two different stages in their life. And one is the larval stage where they flow through the water and they settle, they sink and they land on a hard substrate and that's where they grow into a colony. Mm -hmm. So what we build is a substrate for corals to grow on. Scientists say we've lost half the world's coral reefs and that puts a quarter of the world's fish at risk. But could we help fix that? Could we literally 3D print more coral? Today we're chatting with Nadia Fani and Astrid Kramer. Nadia is a software engineer and a 3D printing expert. Astrid is a marine biologist. Together, they founded Construction to rebuild the world's reefs. Welcome. Hi, hi, Joe. Hi, welcome everybody. Let's ask Nadia first, perhaps. How do you 3D print new reefs? Yeah, that's not easy, but it's possible. Well, I uh, started uh, developing a lot of passion in 3D printing already in 2015. And um, 3D printing has two main technology. One is extrusion and the other one is uh, powder bed or binder jetting. So these two main technology, they both fascinated me a lot and they bring a lot of plus and cons, both of them. Um, but I followed the path of powder bed technology and um, this allowed me to use freedom of material and freedom of shape. And when I saw the possibility of this technology and the ability to print any shape you could imagine, then, you know, your brain kind of open up and <laughs> a lot of uh, possibility they are opening uh, in front of you and say, I can make everything. Of course, that's not possible, but. Of course it is, if you believe in it. And, uh, um, then my path brought me to meet Astrid that she had this passion in artificial reef and protect the ocean and restore coral reef. And we did, well, we did kind of a very good match there because, Hey, I can print anything. Artificial reef need to have natural shape and this is possible. So let's bring Astrid in in a moment, but let's dive into the technology. Um, how does this 3D printer work? How, how's it work? What's it look like? What kind of size are we talking here? And what are you actually printing when you're printing new reef? So our technology is based on cement materials, but the machine has freedom of material, as I said before. And the beauty of it is that uh, the technology works very simply uh, with uh, just a uh, dry powder material and a liquid binder. So for a liquid binder, we use just water or even sea water if you want to go really far and crazy. Um, but as a dry powder, you can use any powder that is reacting and solidified with a uh, liquid binder. What we found very uh, cool and easy to use is cement, of course. cement. He's really powerful material and there is not just the classic porcelain cement that you use for construction, but you have a lot of variety of different kinds of cement, natural cement, Roman cement, uh, Sorel cement, all with different reaction and uh, different uh, possibilities. Um, what we found that you can use a little amount of cement, combine it with any powder or sand that you want even recycle concrete or coral rubble or sand from the beach of the uh, location where you want to restore a reef and you can feed it to the machine and then create a new structure to be installed. The machine is really simple. I go directly in the technology. It works in layer. So you just uh, lay down a layer of powder material, anything you want, mix it with cement and sand. And then you pour water where you need, where you need the reaction of the object to come and, and harden. And then you go layer by layer. At the end, you have a scaffolding of material. You can just dig in and have your object coming out. Interesting. Let's bring in Astrid here. And so you're building a reef. Clearly, you're building it in, not in the water. Because <laughs> you're, you're depositing um, powdered material, that sort of thing. What are you actually building? What does it look like? And, and how do you put it in the ocean? Yeah, so, so what we're building is the structure that corals can use to settle on. 
corals have uh, two different stages in their life. And one is the larval stage where they flow through the water and they settle, they sink, um, and they land on a hard substrate and that's where they grow into a colony. Mm -hmm. So what we build is a substrate for corals to grow on. And basically, as Nadia said, we have freedom of shape. We could go any shape we want. And what we saw, um, in reef restoration is that there are a lot of different techniques, a lot of different solutions, and some of them work great, but every reef should be site specific because every location is different. Every, um, location has different hydrodynamics as a different, um, use of the, of the area has different fish composition, has different algae species, has different coral species and each individual is like everybody has a different house. You don't feel comfortable in, in, in every situation. So, um, I think the freedom of shape is, is quite useful to create reefs because you can take into account habitat requirements of not just the coral, but also the herbivorous fish that live nearby that keep the corals clean. You can take into account maybe the function of wave breaking of, um, providing habitat for octopus or earth, sea urchins, also very interesting species when you look at reef ecology. Why are you looking at this as your next major project? Why are reefs so important? Well, they are, well, they are important for me because I'm fascinated by them, but they are very important to everybody in the world because they, they provide, they're very efficient in coastal protection. They, they reduce the wave energy by 95, 97%, like a coral reef can do that. They provide a lot of fish for people. They provide the opportunity to, um, to look at them for tourism, for recreation. Um, and, and we're also more likely to find new medicine in reef than anywhere on land. Mm -hmm. so the, com the combined function of, well, of course, the, also the biodiversity function, they are, they support a whole system plus the coastal protection function and the tourism and the food makes mm -hmm. them essential to a lot of people. So we're going to go to back to Nadia in a moment and talk about scale. Cause there's some significant scale that you need here, but I want to ask. Are you building coral reefs in different places than they might have been historically? Because we've seen coral bleaching events, right? So we've seen reefs that have lived for millennia where they are, and all of a sudden it's too hot or something's wrong in the water, and they're either moving farther south or they're just dying out. Where are you building them, and are, they, are you building them in different locations than historically we've seen coral reefs? I think... 3D printing and in the stage where it's at right now, um, I don't believe we can rebuild all the coral reefs in the world. I think it's, the, the scale is, is way too big. But what we can do at some places is two things. It's by time, um, by placing these structures, we can protect, um, fragile, um, low lying areas that are suffering from erosion or flooding because the reefs are dying. and we are placing substrate for, um, research, research purposes, because a lot of, um, scientists are working extremely hard to find those species that can withstand higher temperatures and they will grow into new reefs that mm -hmm. can adapt to, to climate change. And I think that's a very interesting purpose. And I know that when you place artificial reefs in a location where there is no coral, where there is no fish, it will be very hard to grow a new reef. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look at the whole, you need to look at the bigger picture. So is there a potential for, for reef ecology? Um, then yes, you can try. And it's a, it's a tool to, to come to healthy reefs again. This episode is sponsored by Dollar Smart, my creator coin. Hap, it's crypto. No, it's not a scam. Buy some to support the show, sponsor the show, get weekly rewards as the coin grows, or just to be part of the community at rally.io slash creator slash SMRT.
Let's bring Nadia back in and talk about that scale. Reefs are massive. I'm not just talking about the Great Barrier Reef or anything like that, but there's literally square kilometers, maybe cubic kilometers of reef material. Uh, how can you possibly 3D print at a scale that is effective and makes a difference? Well, like Astrid said, of course, restore all the reef on the world is quite, um, let's say, a uh, not really scalable thing, yes. but indeed everything can help. So even if you start on a small scale, so in few uh, square kilometer already, uh, it could have a great impact. It could uh, already protect a coast, a beach, a resort, like a, an area where there is a community living and they need protection because the rising it is a problem. It's not just me. So. Already, if we can print a barrier uh, or an artificial reef that can restore uh, locally the marine life and the coral reef and the protection, uh, it's already really, really valuable. And uh, if you don't have it, the consequence there is something that you really don't, don't even want to try to understand it or, or measure, honestly. So um, what we are doing right now is start uh, with the first machine that is going to be able to print uh, a cubic meter to start with, to start with um, testing uh, in location, of course, and uh, with um, uh, interlockable solution. So what we can do to the freedom of shape, you can print different module, depending on what you need or where you need it, and you can combine it together and place it directly in the ocean and uh, click them together, let's say a sort of Lego uh, structure, but uh, with unique pieces, because of course, anything you can fit to the machine, any design you want, it doesn't really cost anything more to have a, a, a beautiful shape. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. thanks to that, you can cover a, a big part of, of the reef. And uh, already, if you have a few meter in depth of an artificial reef, it can create a lot of protection for a coastline and it can create a lot of surface for corals and marine life to grow back. And I'm guessing that once you start, then the corals that come there and colonize will um, build themselves as well, correct? I mean, if, yeah. if it's just a sandy area, they don't really have a place to attach, I'm assuming, but you're building a solid place, they can come attach and they can grow off of that. Is that correct? Indeed. Yeah, exactly. It's correct. And then, of course, uh, um, we are busy also with testing with durability and scalability and uh, stability. Uh, but indeed, if you have a, a substrate that is made of natural material and natural growth, we will just thrive on top of it. Then you automatically create something that will gonna stay there forever because the corals, when it's growing on top of a structure, is creating massive structure on top of something. So even if that something will erode or crack or damage in time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then you will create uh, an ecosystem that will uh, outlive that. In terms of scaling the venture that you're working on, um, I know you're thinking of sending the 3D printer to where it's needed and building in place using local materials and all that stuff. Is there kind of a community aspect to that as well, where you provide maybe the technology, the know-how, and you recruit local organizations to be involved in their own beaches and their own coral reefs? Yes, that's, that's one of our goal and, uh, it's part of our vision. Um, we don't think that we can know better what someone needs than actually where, where someone lives. Uh, if you have a local community that lives and grows in front of a, a real coral reef, then you see it every day. You know what it looked like before and after the coral bleaching, you, you know what it needs, where it's needed and, and how it's needed. So. Yeah, our goal is totally to include the uh, community uh, and the involvement uh, of them will be a key in our projects uh, everywhere in the world. And that's probably a scaling factor for you as well, right? Because you can't be everywhere. You, you're probably not going to build an organization of 500,000 people that can go globally. But if you can partner with, you know, half a million people over the course of a period of time, that could be really, really interesting. Um, you're doing a crowdfunding project right now. Talk about yeah. that briefly. Yeah, we open a crowdfunding, uh, middle of December. 
uh, well, to ask indeed funding to create our first machine because we are a bit on the struggle of the chicken of the egg problem of a startup. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we have we have a great idea and we have no doubts that it will bring a lot of good. And we have we are already working, like you said, John, on creating this connection with a lot of people worldwide, and we are collaborating with Y, Fiji, and uh, a Seychelles where we install some of our box uh, samples structure uh, with Nasser Seychelles. And um, we are doing our best to create more of this connection, to have more of partners everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we started the crowdfunding because to real start our company would need a machine. Nobody can actually do an artificial reef without and a machine that is a small scale, like the one that we are having right now, and we are using for all the testing that we're doing, but, uh, we need, like you said, scale is really important. So yep. to have the first machine to run the first real project, uh, pilot project, if you wanted to say in location with, uh, um, function of wave, uh, wave reduction energy and, uh, coral restoration and marine life repopulation, then you need a machine that is covering at least, uh, a cubic meter of, uh, of structure. And, uh, that's why we start our crowdfunding to ask help from, uh, everybody out there that can, uh, chip in. It's interesting as well. If I'm not mistaken, you're based in the Netherlands, which, um, has low in its name, nether, <laughs> right. And yeah. you obviously are very familiar in the Netherlands with yeah. climate change, uh, sea, uh, sea level rise, all that stuff. Is that one of the reasons why this came top of mind? Well, I'm not Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, but yeah, my house, yeah, what I'm calling right now, my house is based on a floor that is minus four meter, uh, uh, below the sea level. Yeah. So it is indeed quite uh, an urgent matter that the Netherlands needs to face for the Excellent. level rising. We are located on Rotterdam. It's one of, uh, I think it's the biggest in Europe. I don't want to say something that is not correct, but, uh, it's a huge arbor and, uh, is going to bring us connection with all over the world. We just, um, a ship ride, uh, away from us. So, uh, that's a great location, a great mm -hmm. partnership we can create here. Lots of marine contractor as well. Um, so it's a great opportunity. And, uh, I think that Dutch people, they have a lot of experience with water management. Apparently, sure. apparently. <laughs> really good. Really good. Uh, I'm Italian. I had, I had, I grew up in Italy mostly of my life, but, uh, with, we don't have very good. Uh, Italians have some experience with water as well. I believe there's a very famous city. <laughs> there's been a yeah. massive, I wouldn't say yeah, dam built around, that. but <laughs> exactly. You're talking about Venice, of course. I'm yeah. going to bring in Astrid real quick. And I, you know, something just clicked here. I should know this, but I, I introduced you as Astrid Kramer, which is a North American way, Canadian. I'm Canadian, um, but I have Dutch roots and it should actually be Kramer, correct? In Dutch, it is Kramer. Yes, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's okay. Talk to me about your vision. Uh, cast your eye out, uh, look in your crystal ball five years out, you're super successful, things are happening. Where do you want this tech to be? Where do you want this project to be? What do you want to have accomplished? Well, we would very much um, like our, our solution to be all over the world, uh, printing as much as possible, uh, popping out the the modules and, uh, and building reefs. Um, and Besides that, I think it would be amazing if we could develop or contribute to a community. The, the reef restoration community is already out there, but I think as a personal goal, it would be, it would mean a lot to me if we could help people, um, bringing together to collaborate more in this reef restoration challenge that we have worldwide, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people, uh, doing their best for reef restoration, for building reefs, um, studying, um, coral genetics, um, having coral nurseries. And I think this is a challenge that we need to do all together. And we would like to help people by providing the habitat, uh, but also by, by bringing people together. So mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that would mm -hmm. be a nice achievement, I think as well to raise, um, 
Yeah, and, and, and to raise awareness also with, with other people that may, that they might not know a whole lot about coral reefs, but um, we would love to spread the word and, and help them or yeah, inspire them to help everybody in this journey. Excellent. Well, I want to thank both of you for taking this time. Really do appreciate it and uh, wish you the most success. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks.